శ్రీగురుభ్యోన్ నమ హరి ఓం జై శ్రీరామ్ వెల్కమ్ టు అవర్ నెక్స్ట్ ఎపిసోడ్ ఇన్ అవర్ కంప్లీట్ రీడింగ్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీమద్ వాల్మీకి రామాయణ సో బై ద ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్రీవియస్ ఎపిసోడ్ వీ సా హౌ ఇన్ స్పైట్ ఆఫ్ అచీవింగ్స్ ఎ హ్యూజ్ విక్టరీ శ్రీరామచంద్ర వోక్ అప్ ద నెక్స్ట్ మార్నింగ్ వెన్ టు హిజ్ గురు ఇన్ హూ ఈజ్ విశ్వామిత్ర అండ్ సెడ్ I am your kinkar, I am your servant and your servant is ready to take orders from you. I, I said I was not sure about one point there, uh, whether Janaka was indeed doing a yajna in Mithila at that point of time or not. And the clarification is that indeed there was a yajna that was happening and Vishwamitra and the other rishis said that they would be going to Mithila to visit Janaka. as a great yajna was happening there so all of them start and along with them sri ramachandra and lakshman also go as i said in the previous uh, episode vishwamitra maharshi says that there are two great things to be seen in janaka's place i mean the rishi say vishwamitra also says there are two great things to be seen there one is the shiva dhanush which is there in janaka's place and the second one vishwamitra doesn't disclose neither the rishis also don't disclose so all of them are moving ahead now one more thing to learn for all of us is as i've been to telling you for quite some time one is sri ramachandra's curiosity two is his dedication to the word that he gave to his father and the word that his father gave to vishwamitra maharshi vishwamitra maharshi brought him for the yaga rakshana but then while going dasharatha maharaja said please obey please obey whatever vishwamitra maharshi says and do as he says so now vishwamitra maharshi said we will go to another yajna sri ramachandra did not go back and complain hey i came only for this one yajna it's over so should, i should go back to my father's place no that was not at all told this is the wonderful quality there because when you are with a guru you should trust the guru and you should trust that the guru is taking you in the right path in kali yuga it's extremely important that we choose our right guru and we pray to god the god shows us the right guru because we are having a lot of gurus these days where you know we we keep listening about a lot of gurus who are who are ending up being fake but when we pray to god that you know please give me a, a good guru in my life you will also receive a guru who is like a vasistha and vishwamitra that's the assurance that shrimad ramayana is giving to all of us okay now we'll get back to the story again sri ramachandra lakshmana vishwamitra and other sages all of them have now started and they are now walking some of you might have a doubt maricha i mean sri ramachandra killed subahu but he spared maricha and it is the same maricha who comes back later in the form of a golden deer and becomes the reason for sri ramachandra and uh, uh, and sitama to be, to be separated for almost 10 year and sri ramachandra has to struggle hard to get her back from from sri lanka so we all would have these doubts uh, but then yeah ramayana itself would have been uh, different if maricha gets killed but then again those questions we'll have to think a lot to get an answer and i personally believe that it is that's the way vidhi thought that it should happen hence uh, it happened that way okay and again remember sri ramachandra is showing naratva here and it's quite common for humans to spare someone's life and because because we really don't see into the future we end up doing some tasks which we might you know end up regretting later right anyways ravana samhara would not have happened if maricha gets killed so when when we look at it and when, when we try to analyze it we get we get different different types of meanings for this but yeah anyone who has that thought might yeah definitely go back and think about it the in that particular way okay now let's get back uh, to the story all these rishis sri ramachandra and everyone all of them were now walking and they reached to a place called a river called shona the river's name is shona they go there and the place is really beautiful it is such wonderful place look at it it, it had wonderful gardens the trees were beautiful sri ramachandra looked at that place and said wow this place is looking so beautiful uh, hey maharshi why don't you tell me about this place if you think i am eligible to listen about this 
प्लीज टेल मी मोर अबाउट दिस वंडरफुल प्लेस अराउंड शोना नदी दैट्स इट यू नो विश ओनली नीड टू आस्क विश्वामित्र विश्वामित्र वाज एन एक्सपर्ट इट ऑल इन 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 दिस ज्योग्राफी एंड एंड द हिस्ट्री एज वेल ऑफ दोस प्लेसेस सो ही नाउ स्टार्ट्स ऑफ एंड ही सेस वैदर्भ्याम आनयामासा चतुरसदृशान सुदान कुशांबम कुशनाभम च आधूर्त रजसम वसुम सो in the olden days this this entire place was ruled by a person called kusha and he had a wife called vaidarbhi and they had four children the first one's name is kushamba second one's name is kushanabha third one's name is adhurta rajasa fourth one's name is vasuraja all four of them grew up very well they came into their teens and then they really became strong young men post their teens and one day when kusha realized that they are good enough to govern the kingdoms he invited all the four sons to his room and he said see for till date i have ruled this kingdom in an extremely dharmic manner i have ruled this kingdom in an extremely dharmic manner and today i am breaking this kingdom into four pieces and i am giving it each of you as one part each you go to your part you create a city there and then you rule the place from there so uh, you know how many of you have heard this uh, name of the city called kaushambi that was given to kushamba the eldest son the second son kushanabha got mahodaya adhurta rajasa got dharmaranya and vasu got girivrajapura and all four of them they created those cities and uh, in the in the same kingdom and they started ruling and currently the place that we are passing through is called as girivrajapura this was built by vasuraja and around this place there are vipula varaha matanga rishabha chaityaka these are five huge mountains which are around the girivrajapura okay and this river shona it goes through all those five mountains okay and because of this shona river and you know when you, when you have mountains you have some natural advantages to that place so because of the river and the mountainous advantages that the place has this has become a a very very fertile land and wherever you see you see a lot of greenery a lot of uh, plantations a lot of farms great farmland so people are extremely happy here but i have to tell you one thing not about vasuraja but about kushanabha who is saying this vishwamitra is saying this to sri ramachandra so vishwamitra is, is saying to sri ramachandra here kushanabha i mean they are in the kingdom of vasuraja but eventually after some time they they'll enter the kushanabha's place here kushanabha uh, had a had a wife called ghrutachi and ghrutachi was an apsara apsara are the people who stay in devaloka in swarga right and from in kushanabha and grutachi they had about 100 kids now please understand they are the direct descendants of brahma ji chaturmukha brahma ji and brahma's son was kusha and kushanabha is like brahma's grandson so they had celestial powers now don't get into this water about tree and questioning that you know how did this guy have 100 children no we need, we don't get into all those details because the celestial line was still alive at back at that point of time and kushanabha had 100 children and they became and when those 100 daughters grew up they became the most beautiful ones and in ramayana they say they were as wonderful as lightning so such wonderful uh, energy they had and they were experts in music so they were playing veena other other musical instruments they were in their youth and then one day they all move on to one of these mountains okay and there vayudeva appears before them and he says see you are all such wonderful women such wonderful girls but you are all human and the trouble with humans is that the beauty of a human wanes once the once the youth leaves the human so you are going to lose your beauty in some time once your youth time is over so marry me i'll make all of you as devatas and you will have this beauty forever okay and he also told them that i'll make sure that you are in your youth forever in your lives and then see when when such an offer is made 
you know when when you try to uh, hit a woman with beauty the chances are that they might concede uh, in, into the argument but then all these 100 girls they did not even discuss among themselves and they said you are incorrect o oh, vai deva and so uh, and they said kushanabhuta sarva samardhastvam surottama sthanat chyavayitum devam rakshamastu tapo vayam they told see uh, we normally do a lot of tapasya and we will save ourselves with our tapasya you are thinking that you are vayu deva and you are in a devata sthana but you know what if all of us do a sankalpa we can remove you from that position oh vayu deva we can remove you from that position so that so but we are not going to do that but please understand one thing our father has declared a swayamvara for all of us and in a swayamvara one great person will come and he will marry us and our father would because hundred people are talking at once they probably would have said our father will decide who should marry us and I'll marry a person whom my father decides and whom my father tells that hey girl go and marry this this guy I'll go and marry but please don't try to you know trap us into this uh, and, and they also said I mean this is a very if I say this statement in today's world probably many people uh, might not like it but still, uh, this is what his Ramayana is saying. This is what Kushanabha's daughter said. Hence, I am going to say it. All those girls said, we wish that there will not be a day in this world where a, daughter, where a girl has to choose her husband all by herself and without their father. So, they said this wonderful sentence, great thing. When all the hundred girls said like this, Vayudeva got angry. See, in our body, we have, I mean, English medicine says we have, uh, we have a part of our, air is a part of our body, but our traditional medicine, our traditional uh, Vedas, they say that we have like, we have like 10 values in our uh, body and uh, of which the first five are, you know, Prana, Upana, Vyana, Dana, Samana. In that, the, the Samana Vayu, it ensures that all the parts of our body uh, are like you know our hands our legs they grow in a very very balanced way and the air goes into each of the organs as much as it should so now what why they did is he contracted the air supply to some parts of their bodies due to which these girls were not even able to stand up properly after he did that and all the girls were on the floor uh, they were not able to walk, they were not able to do much and those girls looked back at why they were and said you might have done this to us but then we really don't want to give you a Shama Vakya, please go away from here. Why they were leaves but then their bodies have become like this so why they were in, inside their bodies uh, in the form of air and he's ensuring that they are not able to move freely. Now Kushinabha comes back, Kushinabha sees this and they, and they narrate this entire story to their father and then Kushanava says a great shloka. Uh, there is this great Pravachanakarta in Telugu called uh, Pravachanakarta is someone who uh, who sits on a stage and uh, and talks about Puranas and interprets Puranas and and helps people understand the Vedic literature or the Vedic Vangmaya in a better way. So there is this great Pravachanakarta in in the in the Telugu lands uh, and his name is Brahmashri Chaganti Koteshwar Rao Garu. And he and when, when when you listen to his Ramayana, it is in this part that he makes wonderful uh, analysis and in the way he presents it's so inspiring and it, it's so wonderful. So I am taking a leaf out of his book while I am doing these videos. So here, uh, this is a sloka to which he gives some wonderful uh, uh, Vyakhyana. The sloka is Kshama Dhanam, Kshama Yajnaha, Kshama Satyam Hi Putrikaha, Kshama Esak, Kshama Dharmaha, Kshamaya Vishtitam Jagat. So this is the sloka which Kushinaba says to his daughters where he says you have done the right thing and you did not give, give why they were counter curse for which I am extremely happy because for a woman Kshama or, or the ability to bear or the ability to forgive that's the greatest 
a ornament that a woman has and you bore such a big trouble you are you know this this kshama this this ability to bear to bear pain this ability to you know hold pain and not get back to the others that is one of the greatest qualities that a woman should have and uh, you have really shown it and you have actually made me very very happy with your sugunas but that also increases a duty for me i have to find the right person for you so he really needs to figure out a person who can who can marry this woman and at the same time also with his sapa shakti with his spiritual energy get them out of this particular problem with which they are suffering so uh, kushinabha remembers that there was this great maharshi called chuli okay the name is chuli the uh, the, the maharshi's name is chuli and uh, this chuli was doing tapasya uh, and his wife's name is somada chuli's wife's name is somada and she is a gandharva woman and so chuli won't really care as to who is doing all the upacharas to him who is doing all the service to him after his uh, entire tapasya is over he looks at her i mean that that runs into years he looks at her and says why did you do all this why were you serving me for all these years and she says see till now i have not married anyone and i and i don't wish to marry anyone also but then since you are asking me to ask, to take a boon i am a gandharva woman uh, so if i can bear a child without you know you touching me at all i mean i really don't want to go go beyond this in a spiritual discourse if you can give me a son without a, any physical contact i really want to have such a son who can become a brahma gyani so chuli gives her a son and she he uses tapas shakti to give her a son and uh, they name that kid as brahmadatta and brahmadatta becomes a great rishi lot of spiritual power was there in him and and he was living in a city called kampilya so uh, kushanabha now reaches out to brahmadatta he goes to them and he tells them about his 100 daughters and he says you should come and marry these 100 girls again please understand these are all celestial people now don't take a leaf out of that book there so uh, brahmadatta said uh, okay i'll come he again again here you see brahmadatta never said okay these girls are not even able to stand properly on the ground why should i go and uh, marry them no brahmadatta never said anything of that sort all he said was okay i will come i will marry those girls he comes and kushanabha in in marriage they make the husband and wife i mean the, the groom and the bride uh, you know touch each other's hands uh, when brahmadatta was touching uh, each daughter of kushanabha i mean when the when the hands were meeting with his energy brahmadatta ensured uh, ensured that the vayu prasarana or the movement of air in the body uh, of these um, girls gets right and they get restored to their previous beauty so that way all the 100 girls have again become beautiful and brahmadatta uh, uh, lived happily with them so that's the importance of this place and the, and that's the story of this place was what vishwamitra told i'll i'll just take one more minute to just put up one small uh, uh, learning and then we'll close this episode now see sri ramachandra is listening to all of this and and going forward sri ramachandra is going to get married right in mithila is going to get married after shivadhanath bhanga but look at the sort of lessons he is learning here a lesson that uh, a husband a, a person who is marrying a girl should not really look at the physical deformities of the of the girl uh, but rather look at the character what did brahmadatta look in these girls he looked the, at the character that while someone came to entice those girls they stood strong for dharma and the dharma says that you should marry the person whom your father uh, suggests for you right so brahmadatta looked at that particular character and he married those girls and with his tapas shakti with his energy he ensured that all these girls are going to have a better life so it's it's a husband's job to ensure that uh, his wife leads loses any troubles that she has in life and, and, and ends up having a better life so that wonderful lesson sri ramachandra is learning here and at the same time he is also learning about the culture of the land and how a woman should behave how a man should behave how a father should behave okay and how somebody should not behave that, that's shown by vayudeva here and and how 
if you do the such good things now you would be remembered for ages to come so all these learnings are going to sri ramachandra and they are all coming to all of us as well so let us hope that we also uh, do not you know uh, look at people with deformities down and do our best so that they can be back on their feet okay uh, that that's the place where we end this episode sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pasyantu मा कचि दुख भाग भवे ओं तत् जय श्रीराम सर्व सत्कृति साहस महाराज स्वाम चरणारविंदापणमस्तु स्वस्ति